No, I'm very pleased to, to rise to speak on this important issue. And following on from, from Ms Terpster, I, I just want to correct a couple of things. Um, this motion does not suggest that vaping is completely safe. This motion, in fact, says it's not without risk, but it says it's a damn sight well, it doesn't say damn sight. It says it's certainly <laughs> far safer than smoking. And in fact, um, the London College of Physicians, uh, the Australian College of GPs, the uh, Royal College of Physi uh, General Practitioners, Public Health England, all attest to the fact that um, while vaping is not without risk, it is about 95% less risky than smoking. This is harm minimisation. Vaping is about harm minimisation. We're not saying it's harmless, but it is less harmful. Hello everyone, um, my name is Fiona Patton and I'm really delighted to be taking part in this most unusual uh, global forum on nicotine 2020. As you can see, I'm not in the beautiful Warsaw, I'm sitting in my home. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a politician and I represent the northern metropolitan region of Victoria, which I'm very pleased to say also includes what I like to think of as the very best city in the world, Melbourne. I also am the federal, the national leader of a political party called the Reason Party. Now, the Reason Party is an evidence-based party. You know, we believe in the facts and we work with all sides of politics. We don't let the perfect get in the way of the good. Our party was the driving force behind the introduction of Australia's second medically supervised injecting centre here in Melbourne in the inner city suburb of Richmond. And this centre in its first 11 months has literally saved hundreds of lives. They have reversed over 3,000 overdoses. We've seen ambulance call outs down. We are not seeing people literally dying of overdoses in our streets. Our community is feeling safer. This is harm reduction at its core when you treat something like drug addiction as a health issue, not as a criminal one. And this is what we're seeing. The results are there. It works. You know, yep. Sometimes it's controversial. It was controversial, it still is, but it is working. We helped bring in voluntary assisted dying laws in Victoria so that adults could take control at the end of their life, that they could make those decisions. It was historic and it was emotional. In fact, it was one of the reasons that we got elected because we knew it was the right thing to do. We had listened to the experts. We had listened to the community. We established new laws that create 150 metre safe access zones. And this is around women's health clinics that provide abortions. This means that women who are going for a legal procedure are not harassed and harangued right up to the door by religious protesters. They have to stay 150 metres away. But I think it's true to say that probably one of my real passions is around drug law reform and harm reduction. And I ran and introduced a very wide ranging, multi-party inquiry into drug law reform and into drug use. It was the largest inquiry of its kind in Australia. And it's now helping guide government approaches. And guess what? Harm reduction is at the front of it. Right now, I'm chairing the Parliament's Legal and Social Issues Committee, and we're doing an inquiry into cannabis use. This inquiry will hear from all sides of the debate. And this is a, you know, this is a debate that's not just happening in Australia. We know it's happening around the world. And I hope that we will make recommendations that make for a fairer, more sensible approach to cannabis laws. But back to the issue at hand. And I think this is probably less of a presentation than more of a conversation starter as part of this global forum on nicotine. And it's a very vexed topic. 
I mean, what or who should guide the political agenda? Well, surprise, surprise, as a politician, I actually think politicians should drive the political agenda because when the experts start doing it, then they become politicians. And that is not what we want. As you saw at the beginning, I'm not really shy about attempting to educate my fellow parliamentarians on the subject of tobacco harm reduction. But someone like me who is driving that political agenda must rely on the experts and the researchers and the doctors and the healthcare professionals and the community at large. You are who provides me with the hard data to take that agenda to Parliament. If COVID-19 has taught us anything, it's that the public want to hear from professionals, giving them quality, accurate information that they can trust. I mean, who would you rather take health advice from? This guy? We have to act policy-wise on data, and we're gonna be getting more data, a lot more data. Or this guy? Supposing we hit the body, with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. Supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. Look at the dismal approval level of the US president, who seemingly takes absolutely no notice of what health professionals tell him. And then compare that to another US leader, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Now Cuomo has relied heavily on evidence and that has been obvious in his communications during this pandemic. And the citizens trust him because of that. They know that he is turning to and listening to the experts, to the doctors, to those who know. We trust those who believe in facts. And I'd like to live in a world where facts matter. It's kind of up to the politicians, but it's up to the activists. It's up to the doctors. It's up to the prof professionals. And I know you're out here today. You know, you need to come to politicians like me, arm me with the facts, arm me with the data, give me the case studies, and give me that evidence from you, the trusted professionals, so that I can use that on the front line of the political battle. I can be the one who stands there as a politician. So look, maybe I was wrong. Politicians may run the political table, but the facts should drive the agenda. I may be asking the questions, but evidence will win the argument. So look, thanks again to the organisers and thanks to everyone who's here today in this digital, global forum on nicotine. I hope that we can get together in person in 2021. Thank you, President. My question is for the Minister for Health and regards e-cigarettes, or more properly called vaporisers. About one in eight cancer deaths in Australia can still be attributed to smoking, underlying the importance of cessation strategies to our health system. The UK medicines regulator has approved a brand of vaporisers as an aid to help people stop smoking, which can be prescribed on their PBS. At least 64 scientific studies now demonstrate that smoke-free products like vaporisers are less harmful than traditional t cigarettes or are an effective way to quit for good. These studies include a publication um, it, these studies include a publication in the prestigious peer-reviewed New England Journal of Medicine, which demonstrated that a one-year abstinence rate was 18% in the vaporiser group compared to 9% in the nicotine replacement therapy. My question is, will the Minister revisit the e-cigarette laws introduced by the Tobacco Amendment Act in 2016 in light of this emerging empirical evidence? Yeah. 